think we're going to begin this uh, discussion talking about creativity. How does, how does Hoodlum begin a new project? Well, where do ideas come from at Hoodlum? We've come from television, so yeah. our model is very similar to television. Yeah. So we develop ideas, it comes from story first. It's always about the story. Because the kind of projects that we do, um, part of them ends up online or in other platforms, we've needed to bring in technology people into our, into our fold because yeah. um, we found quite quickly by doing a few projects when you outsource that um, it doesn't always go as planned. Yeah. And knowing that we're dealing directly with an audience and that audience can come back and say, this, isn't, this is crap, it's very important for us to make sure that nothing breaks down and that everything actually gets to that audience and that audience member has a great experience. We try and, you know, as a TV production company, would try and keep our eye on the market and go and talk to people and see what they're interested in. Mm. And because we've been operating in this space when there was no market, yeah. we, um, we have had to work outside of Australia because the Australian market, yeah. until the last few years, has been the smallest market for us. And MIP has been really important for us, to be honest, because we've been coming here since 2000 and that's where we meet people from overseas and, yeah. and we start talking about what the potential is. How do you analyse story? I mean, obviously, presumably, has to excite you as creative individuals, but, but what's the next question you ask of a story in a world where your commissioner could be a, a phone company or a TV company or, you know, a, a confectionery brand? For us, the audience is, is massively important yeah. in, in us being able to, to tell our story. And, and really, a lot of the... Now, um, we sort of think about story with the audience at heart. Um, because uh, where our story lives now isn't, uh, isn't just on TV, isn't just online, isn't just on mobile, it literally is everywhere. Yeah. We're, we're constantly sort of thinking of like how we can actually create and build and take an audience with us from the start uh, online and then actually then take that audience to, to other platforms. Yeah. And hopefully uh, the, the more that we sort of do this, broadcasters and commissioners uh, at, at Broadcast alike, will start to sort of appreciate and feel that it's great to be integrated from the start yeah. um, and not just sort of consider digital as a, a sort of poor cousin and, and actually sort of have it for, you know, from, from the very beginnings of a, of a, of a show idea. Mm. So um, that's our sort of goal and aim. But one of the things that um, you were saying in our conversation before we all sat down here, you know, was that um, you start with demographics. Yes, maybe it's my advertising background but uh, almost every single show that we created, we, we started thinking, who do we want it to attract? Who's the, the target audience? Doesn't mean that story is not important, but no. the first thought is, okay, what's the audience? And then we start doing research, which stories could resonate with that target audience? It's more comedy, it's more sci-fi, it's more um, diary-based, and then we build from there. Mm. I, I think one uh, advantage of uh, transmedia or these online properties is that they can, go, they can be niche. You, you can sp specif specify and, and create a show for an audience that can be just 15 to 17 and go in, in, into these different sub subgroups that normally on television yeah. we're not allowed to care because you have such a wider yeah. audience and uh, that online allow you to go and connect with, the, with these people and be speci uh, sp really specific because that then influences how your characters will develop, the tone of the show and how you will present this to, to, to an audience. And again, I think the characters are as important as the story. We try to produce uh, dramas that are for itself. S sometimes it's sponsored by or, or been possible by a brand that helps us do it. Uh, so, and this question is so huge. How do you design this? How do you create this f so it works? And the, the common denominator, th the easiest way to talk about the creative so that the script writers and the game designers and everybody understands it is to talk about people. And so it's the people, like you said, the characters in the show, uh, the people that populate the story. Rather than talking about the storyline or the story arc, which is of course important, we talk about the people and their stakes in the story. And then we talk about the other people, the audience, and how they can share these stakes. So basically it's the character on the show and the character caring for the show and how they interact. And if you can create a, a, a dramatic platform where these two groups of people, the audience and the on-air characters basically, share the stakes, care about the same things, and can influence it together, then you have a, a show that can, can work anywhere. And you can, um, and you can sort of research your target groups or research your technology from there. When you're pitching a brand, what are you pitching? Are you pitching the story still? Are, you, are they interested in that? Or are you pitching benefits? Or 
of course, when you go to a brand, and normally you don't go to the brand directly, you go to media agency or advertising agencies, um, what excites them is stories. But then the bottom line is, which audience are we, you giving to them? So most of the decisions, and I, I don't know about your experience, but the shows that I've done and uh, the, 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 the brands I attracted, bottom line is, how many people are you selling to me? These, these media agencies, they have these Excel files, mm -hmm. and you give them a number, and they give you the, the money that they, they are willing to put in your show. If you guarantee me this audience, I'll be willing to put X amount of money in your show. And what, what, what is uh, exciting is when you do something that is multi-platform and goes on different platforms, you can <laughs> build on that audience, so you can give them X amount of views online, you can give them X amount of views on mobile phones, you can give them X amount of views on television, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if your show cross to television, as most of our shows do, so that becomes an in interesting proposition for them. So just to come back to the sort of, you know, to the, to the, to the call here, Matt, I mean, um, you know, we were talking about, you know, ways of exciting people. Uh, it's really important to avoid the where, what, how questions. Uh, for me, and, and a word popped out when I was listening that the, the importance in all of this for me is play. There's a new title, Transmedia Producer, which I think is made official by the Writers Guild, so we can probably Produce, use, the, you can use those words now. Producer of Transmedia, whoever that person is, it's important to have the ego disappear. So when you walk in, the dichotomy between the television person and the online person, you, it's important to make that disappear. They have to become part of one entity working one thing. And again, if you get that window ahead of time where you can go in there and people can play with maybe it's story, maybe it's characters, maybe it's the idea, maybe it's something they, they enjoyed when they were young, maybe it's something they remembered fondly, and they're playing as one team. And then slowly you unpeel the different skill sets that people have. Uh, that, that's the process. But for me, it begins with something pretty sort of whimsical. You said to me, virality is good design, i.e., I think I did. you did. <laughs> and i.e., I mean, one of the things that I observe in this world is that the line between what is marketing and what is production um, is fast disappearing. Well, um, when, when talking to, to broadcasters, it's become apparent over the years that they start to talk about transmedia as something you add to a show, uh, and, but that doesn't necessarily work. It's like superficial ancillary things and if it's not interconnected with the, with the heart of the, the project it won't work so what you have to do is you have to change the content uh, the script the, uh, the the acting the directing everything at the heart of it so that it invites people and if you change that design so that it, you know it's open for virality it can be inviting the audience to participate maybe the, and it's this differences in for instance the directing the, the char character has to need the audience in another way to be complete than maybe a, a very you know imposing normal drama character mm -hmm. need. So, but if you design it for that, if you write it for that, and if you produce it for that, so that audience engagement is at the heart of it, then it can spread. Because if you have a very sort of complete and in a way dead art piece that is already done, mm. there's not much you can add or care for or, or carry as a, as an audience uh, to to make that uh, go out into the world. So, so that's why we we sort of want to design the content for participation and for you know, viral spread, mm. and then, and then uh, you know, design the mechanisms on to make that happen.